Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by an English poet named Elizabeth Jennings. She lives from 1926 to 2001. She received in 1953 an award for the uh, Arts Council of Great Britain Prize for the Best Book of Poems. She won the Somerset Maugham Prize for A Way of Looking in 1955 and the W.H. Smith Literary Award for Collected Poems uh, in 1987. She also received an honorary Doctorate of Divinity from Durham University in 2001 and in 1992, Commander of the Order of the British Empire. So needless to say, she is a a highly well-respected poet of the 20th century. The poem that I'm going to read today is called Act of the Imagination. It's from her uh, collected poems. It goes like this. Surely an act of the imagination helps more than one of faith when a doubt brushes us. We need strong passion to summon miracles. Life after death Bread turning into flesh and blood from wine. I need to cast around and find an image for the most divine concepts. My mind must move on holy ground. And then the hardest creed, the rising from death when Christ indeed bled finally. Ideas cannot come as barren notions. Yes, I always need Herbert's sonnet prayer, say, or that great Giotto painting for my heart to leap to God. I want to meet him in my own poems. God is metaphor and, and rising up. I watch a lucid sky and see a silver cloud and Christ behind it. This is part of faith. Hear the great hours sung and let faith be loud with the best imagining we have. This is how I approach my God-made man. Thus I learn to love and yes, like Thomas, know Christ through a touch. After hearing that poem, I'm guessing it's not a surprise that uh, Elizabeth Jennings was a devout Catholic, or that her work was highly influenced by um, England's best Catholic poet, perhaps, uh, Gerard Manley Hopkins. Thematically, you see a lot of Hopkins here. You hear um, the same images, the same questions, the same longings and um, struggling, I think, in some ways. Her work, especially in this poem at least, is maybe not as experimental as Hopkins was. She's not pushing the edge of the line, the concept of a line, or even the concept of rhyming the way Hopkins did. She's not you know, trying to twist your mind as you read the way he might have. That was you know, very purposeful and, and um, formational for his, for his work. There's more of a simplicity here in terms of her lines, but she's still asking these really difficult questions, I think. Um, And this is one of those poems of faith that I think is worth returning to because yes, it wrestles with doubt, but it also suggests the concept of surety. Um, It permits the asking of questions, but also believes in mystery. And I think those are really valuable things, really valuable ways of diving into poetry or modes of thinking about poetry. And, 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 or maybe I should say that it, those are the kinds of things that, that great poetry um, can permit us to linger in, if that makes sense. So that's why I like a, a poem like this. Um, it's a good poem to memorize, by the way. Um, highly recommend that. So uh, one more time, here is Elizabeth Jennings' Act of the Imagination. Surely an act of the imagination helps more than one of faith when a doubt brushes us. We need strong passion to summon miracles. Life after death, bread turning into flesh and and blood from wine. I need to cast around and find an image for the most divine concepts. My mind must move on holy ground. And then the hardest creed, the rising from the dead when Christ indeed bled finally. Ideas cannot come as barren notions. Yes, I always need Herbert's sonnet prayer, say, or that great Giotto painting for my heart to leap to God. And I want to meet him in my own poems. God is metaphor and and rising up. I watch a lucid sky and see a silver cloud and Christ behind it. This is part of faith. Hear the great hours sung and let faith be loud with the best imagining we have. This is how I approach my God-made man. Thus I learned to love, and yes, like Thomas, know Christ 
through a touch. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you. Thank you.